Lieberman called the ceasefire with Hamas surrendered to terror. Transferring the 15 million dollars in cash to the Hamas people in Gaza in the ceasefire after 500 rockets or close to 500 rockets were launched on the south, this is beyond what I can tolerate. It is obvious that in politics you can't always win 100%. But we need to determine a clear line or when we can be flexible and when not. Now, the defense minister is not alone. Many Israelis are with him, calling this recent barrage of rockets into southern Israel unacceptable. So where is all this headed? Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. Barry, I want to talk about where this is all headed in your opinion in a minute, but first I want to talk about what happened at the United Nations. True to form, here you have the United Nations once again overwhelmingly condemning Israel uh, when it has shown extreme restraint after being hit with a barrage of rockets. Graham, if there was ever a reason for somebody who was an independent, clear thinker to decide the UN days are over, that day, Graham, is today. In the week that Hamas launches nearly 500 rockets, all targeting civilians in southern Israel, unprovoked, for no reason other than to establish their dominance over their own people again and to terrorize Israel, the United Nations says nothing about this unmitigated war crime. Instead, nine resolutions are introduced today in the United Nations to condemn Israel. And get this, of all the other countries in the world put together and all the slaughter and all of the racism and all of the religious intolerance going on in the world, zero resolutions were introduced today against any country or any movement. Instead, all nine against Israel and none condemning the attacks against civilian targets, which under the Geneva Conventions is a war crime. Now, let's face it, the UN is a pro-Hamas entity, and that's why the United States is uh, recoiling uh, under President Trump. It's one of the reasons anyway, and certainly it's anti-Israel, and that's another reason why President Trump is recoiling from the United Nations, rightfully so. But I want to talk about real quick, I don't want to get down in the weeds, but the ceasefire vis-a-vis uh, -vis the election coming up, is that why there was a ceasefire brought so quickly, in your opinion, because of Benjamin Netanyahu's party? He doesn't want to take a hit? Well, clearly, it's causing the fall of the government. The, the Knesset, or parliamentary system, Graham, in Israel requires the ruling member uh, of the Knesset, in this case, the Likud party with Netanyahu as prime minister, to control 61 seats. They had a seven or eight hour cabinet meeting while the rockets were falling, and everybody apparently, at least it's leaked out, wanted to go into Gaza except Netanyahu. What happened as a result, the second most powerful man in Israel resigned from the government, right. Lieberman quit as defense secretary and took his seats with him, and now there's going to have to be an early election, which I don't think Netanyahu counted on. It's interesting, Barry, that the residents, many of the residents of southern Israel who were the targets of this barrage of rockets are, are mad about the ceasefire. They don't like the ceasefire. I think that's very, very telling. Uh, they think there should have been some sort of stronger response. Where is all of this headed in your opinion? Did they avert a war or is this the prelude to war? Oh, it's definitely prelude. I've been in those towns, Graham, and I've filmed there and I've interviewed residents. They're literally four to five seconds away from a rocket being launched across the fields hitting their apartment buildings or their schools. Those residents are terrified and are demanding, and rightfully so, the IDF cross the border and go in and take out the leaders of Hamas. If they don't, this capitulation will cause more aggression, will cause more terror, and eventually it's gonna be a bloody conflict. I've been told Israel knows where the leaders of Hamas hide. Every time they go in, they congregate underneath the basement in the central hospital in downtown Gaza City. If they go in there and take out the leadership, the terror gram would stop. But, but the people 
don't want it, but, but the, the leadership Im does. Right, but the important point that you just pointed out there is they're meeting in a hospital, and they do that obviously for a reason. It's a despicable, disgusting reason, but they're doing it because they know the Israelis will not target the hospital. Yep, this doesn't have a pretty ending. Very exactly. Nice.